So I do a little bit of cleaning up of castings when I, if I have a bespoke job and everything else I do is setting. So how does the Datto help me with that has been, I mean, it's, it's, it's perfect for what I need really. It's... So it definitely wasn't an impulsive purchase. I f would have first learned most likely on Instagram like everything else. Um, so you start seeing, start seeing a few people with it. Uh, Goldsmith I know in South London got one and you know when they weren't unhappy with it that sort of said everything I needed to know uh, I knew my requirements for having a laser weren't the same as most goldsmiths most owners of lasers my requirements weren't going to be the same I wasn't gonna be doing much sizing I wasn't gonna be doing much much of the sort of heavier work requiring the speed or anything like that uh, but it was always sort of a want more than a need then a friend, a good friend of mine, Maxime Carrier in uh, Canada, we, we trained together in Antwerp. He picked up a, a larger machine, but he had a larger studio. So once that happened, it was like, oh, okay, if you got one, I need one. Um, but to be fair too, he was also, he does a lot more goldsmithing and stuff. So it made sense, he had a bigger one. But yeah, I just sort of, I started shopping around. I was looking at his, I was looking at this and I was looking at the MS-35, I think at the time it was just come out. It all came down to footprint. Uh, you know, I'm sure I would have liked some of the extra features of the speed of the larger machines, who wouldn't? Um, but for the price, yeah, I couldn't go wrong. And, and for the footprint, I couldn't fit anything else. So that was an easy decision. So I do a little bit of cleaning up of castings when I, if I have a bespoke job and everything else I do is setting. So how does the Datto help me with that has been, I mean, it's, it's, it's perfect for what I need really. It's, so the main things that I'll come across is porosity on a casting, cracks in a setting job, claws will crack, um, you know, beads will not cast correctly. If somebody sends me something with beads or grains, small little mistakes that I don't make. Uh, you know, burst lips, gravers, this kind of thing. Um, I get some handmade platinum that every once in a while, it doesn't seem like it's rolled out correctly. And once you start cutting into it, everything's kind of starts falling apart. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's perfect for that to have it here. I, you know, I would never say that I do, I, I wouldn't be on it for more than a minute or two at a time, but I would say I use it probably once uh, if I'm busy, I would use it probably once a day. And it's just little things too. It's little things. If, if you've got a, a ring with a, uh, with soldered on claws, you can kind of see the solder joint on the inside of that upper bezel. You can see the solder joint. And if you bend the claw out a little bit to, uh, to just to fit your stone in before you start to start cutting your seats, you can often see that solder joint, not necessarily crack, although it may, but you can see it. It just gets a little porous, uh, just from the stretching, the stretching when you open the claw a tiny bit. And you know, most of the time that's totally fine, but sometimes you just see it and you're like, you know what, I've got it, might as well. Laser's right behind me, got it on Alexa, so I just turn the laser on. And uh, I just give that a quick zap, nicely, boom, boom. And you know, now you know that it's nice and strong uh, settings of like setting is a reductive process most of the time. So you start with in, well, in this case, a completely blank ring, you drill holes, you open up those holes with a ball burr, and then you're pushing, you know, you in, in almost every setting, you know, you're removing metal. So the stones fit properly in their seats and then you're pushing metal over top. But during that removal process, it's very easy sometimes to remove too much. And when, you know, when you're learning, one of the main things that you sort of learn is how to not, you know, cover those mistakes, but like nobody's perfect, certainly not at a microscopic level. So you sort of get really good at, you know, massaging things and, and pulling angles over to sort of, okay, well, there was a tiny bit taken off there too much. So that grain looks a little bit bigger than this one. So we're going to file this one up a little bit. And it's, it's a lot of little stuff like that in setting. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's totally normal. That's how things have been done for, for a thousand years, but it's, uh, it's, it's nice 
to also be able to have that sort of like really, really nice precision so that if you do make a very small mistake like that, if you drill a little bit too deep, or if you have something break off, it's really nice to be able to just go zap. Okay, now we're good to go again. And we don't now have to do that step at the end. That's gonna make it look fine, but microscopically it may just be a little bit off, just a tiny bit. The stuff like that kind of bothered me before. Um, massaging things to just kind of get the best. Now you can really, it just helps you to really achieve that uh, that perfect finish that I aim for you know even even on client jobs uh, it's it's something that you know if, if I have like a setting job come in most of the time like the, the time I would lose by parceling the job back up and sending it back out to the client it, you know it's just it's a pain that time should be invoiced when you know it's literally just a two minute fix if that so having it for that is just, it's awesome. I would, I would definitely recommend the, the dado for sure. It's, it's done everything that I've asked of it. So I definitely can't complain. It's, it's a great little machine. Um, it's, uh, you know, for the price, you definitely can't go wrong. It's, it's going to do everything that you throw at it. It's tiny. It's super low maintenance. It's quiet. You know, it's, uh, it, it's been great for me. Um, there's a couple of things sometimes that I wish I had a tiny bit more power, but at the end of the day, I didn't pay that much and it doesn't take up that much space. So it's still doing more than not having one and it's definitely worth it in that regard. Uh, I, I have one customer who does a lot of handmade platinum. They, I don't know if they had a bad batch or a bad melt. Something happened in the roll, but the ring looked great and I drilled everything out and how I how I cut my pave some people cut the thread with like the bright cut some people cut the bright cut before they drill the holes I, I drill my holes before I cut so when you do that those tiny little grains the beads they're very very fragile so you need to be careful and you know if there's any sort of issues with them like porosity or you know casting issues or a melt issue or rollout issue then they're going to become quite apparent and it was literally like when you drill your hole you cut kind of like a v-shaped groove here and there's just a tiny little bead there and there was a crack inside the metal you couldn't see it on the side and it was it was running parallel to the top of the metal and it must have ran for about six holes so the metal looked totally fine and usually working in handmade platinum is a lot nicer than cast so I'm always looking forward to it because I'm like, oh, it's so nice to cut. And uh, yeah, then all of a sudden it's like, funk, one falls off, two fall off, three fall off, four fall off. And every time you do that, even with the laser, it's, it's a huge pain because firstly, you got to build up the grains and then you got to go back and cut them. And then you got issues with porosity potentially and your piece is all full of lubricant, which can also affect the porosity. So it's just an absolute nightmare, but I sonic it forever. And yeah, even, even the, the data the data was great. It, it did totally fine for that. I was able to build up each grain individually, go back, recut the bright cuts and um, proceed. And that, you know, that was, I think that was even a pre-Christmas job. And that was, uh, that averted, you know, two, two postings, which Pre-Christmas in this country is, is is a lot, and it's a scary thought mid-December to uh, be using the post at all, to be honest. So, you know, it's just little things like that. Um, it really it really comes in handy for. Uh, so it's it's definitely. You know, I think I bought it as a toy. I bought it because everyone else has had it, and I knew I would find some uses for it. But it's uh, it's really, I use it far more than I thought I would and it's nice. It's a tough one, you know, I guess, you know, you should, you should figure out what you want to weld first, you know, like what are you working on? Because obviously if you're working on silver, then you want to make sure you're aware of, of uh, the power limitation here with the silver. But I mean, as far as buying a laser, yeah, I guess just trying it out and trying to, to figure out the applications for what you need and, and how the machine is, is going to help you. Uh, is, is just comes down to that. As far as getting to use it, 
I, I have a, I had a little bit of a background from my previous career with welding. So I feel like that helped kind of uh, actually quite significantly. Like I never had any training on this and I just sort of, I picked it up relatively quickly I felt. But yeah, I guess just understanding what the laser is doing, you know, because a lot of people don't realize, you know, the heat settings or the, the power settings, how it affects the, the puddle and everything else. And, and the limitations of laser welding as well, you know, where you can and can't use it regardless of the machine, you know, where, where it's going to be brittle and how it affects around stones. So, I mean, it's good to talk to a professional. And I guess that's probably where you guys come in really well is, is you're, you're really on that in, in that sort of thing in that you're, you're not sort of just there sitting by the phone waiting for an order. You know, you guys yourselves literally could be a big part of the reason that they're so successful here in UK is because you're going out there and you are educating people about them. And, you know, you came out and you educated me and, and through other people that I guess that you've done that with, it's, you know, that sort of social proof to me that the machine worked as well. And so, yeah, just learn as much as you can about as many as you can within your budget and try them. I selected Freeform to purchase it because a lot of the people that I had seen on my social media channels seemed to be using Freeform and they all had great things to say about yourself, Matt, and, and the team. Um, the customer service, I guess, and the way you guys drove out to let me demo the machine was pretty cool as well because I don't get into London too often uh, if I don't have to. <laughs> So yeah, that was a big, that was a big thing for me to, to, to have it come out and, you know, get to try it out, get to play with it. Uh, that meant a lot. And yeah, it's just, yeah, everyone I dealt with there was good. It, it was just kind of a, an easy, an easy choice.